Hey Confines crew, Mark from the Ark here. Just checking in on you, hope you're all okay. This will be posted on Sunday morning and uh, I'm just uh, just going to share a couple of thoughts with you. Hope you're all doing okay. Just checking in on you. <clears throat> I've had a lot of kind words because I've not coughed all afternoon and I want to I wanna <clears throat> do this stuff. Just being honest with you. Probably just nervous because I think I'm probably not naturally suited to this like some people. But I'm just trying to do the right thing in response to the need that we have. Um, <clears throat> I'm doing it again, look. I've had some kind words from people right across the board. I've talked about having a face for radio. That's the truth. Um, even from some of the ministers. Um, from Lynn, from Dorothy, from... Karen, from Kate, from my old friend Phil Can. It was really great to hear from you, matey. God bless you and Miriam. And uh, just sharing some thoughts. Um, one of our former pastors, Dennis, made a comment or was talking about 2 Corinthians 4, 13, about with that same spirit of faith we speak when he quotes Psalm 116 and verse 10. <clears throat> And Psalm 116.10, I'm going to read some of it to you. Just a couple of verses. Take the old glasses off. Time of life. <clears throat> Let's go from verse 8. For you, O Lord, have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, listen to this, I believed, therefore... I said, I am greatly afflicted. And in my dismay, I said, all men are liars. Now, it doesn't give us a lot of background with regard to Psalm 16, 116, sorry. And I've not studied it through. <clears throat> but I believe, therefore, I said, I'm greatly afflicted. Interesting, that, isn't it? You ever thought about that? And we'll read from 2 Corinthians 4 in a minute. <clears throat> we speak what we believe. I might, this may not surprise you, but I've got news for you. You'll say what you believe. We'll, we'll do it. What do you believe? What do you believe? Why is this? <clears throat> it's because we say what is in our hearts. In Matthew 12, 35, and in Luke 6, 45, Jesus says this, <clears throat> that men speak, or women, people speak, from the abundance or the overflow of the heart. To my left, there's an airing cupboard, which is no longer an airing cupboard. There's a new combi boiler in it. But there used to be, in that cupboard, um, an overflow built into the header tank. So if ever that tank, too much water came into it, it would overflow outside. And it's the same with our hearts. That which is in us will spill out. Now what's in me? This is what the updated, I'm, I was reading there from the 1984 NIV. What is in my heart? What is my heart full of? This is what the updated NIV says. I'm going to read it to you. Here's, here's how the updated NIV quotes Jesus. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. <clears throat> wow, what a statement. For the heart speaks what the mouth is full of. Now what I might say in a couple of seconds might be unpopular, but it is true. We all have things in our hearts that we're embarrassed of, that we're maybe ashamed of, that are sinful, things that we struggle with, things that we battle with, things that are all kinds of things, spiritual, emotional, moral, all kinds of stuff. Financial, I'll talk about that another time. All of those things. I got some of you then, because some of you maybe don't agree with that, but I believe that that is true. So that the glory of God might be seen in us, because God uses imperfect people. I've had people say to me that God can't use imperfect people. All the way I read through scripture, everywhere I read, people are imperfect. They're imperfect. God uses imperfect people. Abraham lies. Moses murders. Samson... He, 
does all kind of things with the girls. <clears throat> Peter denies Jesus. Judas does all kind of stuff. And I still believe, another, another interesting thought, however we see predestination, Jesus made provision for Judas to be forgiven. Judas didn't take that, but that's my own view. So what's my heart full of? Um, do I speak of the good that's stored up in my heart or just do I speak of the, the other stuff? Because every one of us here, in our hearts, we have struggles and we have tussles. And we will say what is in our hearts. <clears throat> You know, some of us sometimes will make a comment somebody and we'll realise what we've said and we'll say, oh, I was only joking. But actually the truth is we weren't joking because that thing came out of our heart. It maybe came into our mind. It may be <laughs> we said it before we thought. Anybody else with me, you've said something before you thought it. Am I the only one? I'll be the only one today. We've all done it. If my heart is full of bitterness, if my heart is full of unforgiveness... If my heart is full of all those sort of things, those things will come out. If it's full of unforgiveness, rage, pride, lust, greed, which Galatians says is idolatry. If it's full of those things. But here's the challenge. What about faith? <clears throat> I can often tell or you can tell what's in somebody's heart by what comes out. What about when defeatism rises up in my heart? What about insecurities? And the psalmist in 116 says, I believe, therefore I said, therefore I said, I am greatly afflicted. Why? Because I feel that I'm afflicted. And all men are liars. The view that was in the heart came out of the mouth. I said it. The psalmist had maybe been in a mess and his confession was, you know what? I'm in a mess. Why? Because his heart saw mess hmm interesting isn't it i'm going to read to you from 2 corinthians 4 13 which got me to thinking the other day <clears throat> okay and i'm going to read from 13 which is the verse that made me think that then is shared it is written i believe therefore i said or it is written, rather, I believe, therefore I have spoken. With that same spirit of faith, we also believe and speak. Because we know that the one who raised our Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise up, us up with Jesus and present us with you in his presence. Wow. There's no, therefore, I believe I'm greatly afflicted there. There's, I believe, therefore, I've spoken and I've spoken with what? A spirit of faith. Wow. With that same spirit of faith. With that reliance on God. With that trust on God. With that conviction which the word faith means. Trust and conviction. With that same trust and conviction. I will speak and believe that God will present me. One day Paul says. With you. In the presence of the Lord. Jesus will raise you up one day with us in the presence of Almighty God, he says to the church in Corinth. I want you to know one day Jesus will raise you up and present you to be with him in eternity. You can rely on that promise and you can confess it and speak it and believe that it's true. Jesus will do that. I'm going to read a couple more verses to you. And I'm going to go to, I'll read, I'll read from verse 18. In fact, I'll read, I'll read, uh, I'll read, I'll read 15 as well. See, I need my glasses. All this is for your benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we, were, we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles. Now think about what we're going through at the moment. And Paul calls those, we think, oh, this is the toughest thing. Paul calls them light and momentary. Are we speaking that with the spirit of faith in the context of this? Remember our church, we have something called the sandwich rule, the filling in the sandwich. What's the scripture the other side? And what's the scripture on the bottom, above and below? Yeah, when you choose your sandwich, you choose it because you want to know what's in the middle, the filling. And that's very important. Context is massive in this. 
so that grace is reaching more and more people and it may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal, and that word means weight, or the word glory means weight, a weight of eternal glory, that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. What is unseen? For what is seen is temporal or temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. <clears throat> Speak a spirit of faith today. Believe that God is with you. I know things are difficult. I know things are tough. You might not have enough at the moment. There might be problems. There might be difficulties. But speak with a spirit of faith and trust God. And you are being renewed day by day. You're getting older. You can see some of you remember me. I had hair. Uh -huh. Nice hair. I had a dark beard. I was tall, dark and reasonably handsome. Now I'm a bit shorter, older, balder. I have a grey, I have a grey beard. That's how it is. I don't dye my hair. Whatever. Embrace the fact that God, though you may be getting older, that God is renewing you day by day. Embrace that. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix them on Him. And fix them on eternity. Because what you're going through is temporal, <clears throat> but what He is doing is eternal those of you watching you've never watched this before um we lead a church called the ark on strelly road <clears throat> some of you have shared what we've done the last few days we want you to know if you've never heard this before jesus loves you we want you to know that you can spend eternity with him we want you to know that he cares about your life and is interested in you some of you watching you don't believe i can't do anything about that i can only present the truth to you but you can go away and say, God, if you're real, show me that you are real. Reveal yourself to me. Show me. You can do that. And I'd love you to do that. Maybe some of you, just when you get alone, side of your bed, when you get alone, when nobody's around and you've got the chance at this moment. God, <clears throat> in all of this mess, in all of this trouble, is this light and momentary? Because am I going to spend the greater part of my life in another place or even on a renewed earth with you? Am I going to spend more of my life in eternity than I am this life, which is temporary? For sure, I believe that that's true. Jesus came to die for you because he loved you and he wants you to know him. And if I can help you in that journey, or if you have any questions about your faith, come and talk to us because we love you and we're interested in you. We don't have a great big church. We only have a small church, but a church that loves people and wants people. And if we can do that, we want to help you if we can. God bless you all. And uh, praying that the Lord will help you in every way. Lord, we thank you for every person. Pray for the people of our church as they watch this. Pray for the people um, who are friends who are watching this. Pray for the people who this has been shared with. That you will touch them and help them. That your life, the life of God, that power that comes through knowing you. And you're dying on the cross for our sin. And rising from the dead for, to, to make us right with you. The Bible says we pray that that would become real to us. We pray that you would help us in all the things that we face. Help us to know that they're light and momentary. Help us to begin to put our trust in you. We pray these things in your name, Jesus. If you want to say the word, you can say it. Amen. Amen. If you want to message us, if we can help you, we'd love to help you. Please be in touch. We love you very much. We really do care about what's happening. And we send our love to you, Sarah and I. And we'll see you very soon. God bless you.